Father, we love you, Jesus. Lord, I pray about everything that's going to be done this day in this service, Lord. Lord, I bind the voice of the enemy that would steal from us, Lord. I bind our voices, oh God, that would tell us something, Lord, that the enemy has planted long ago, Lord, to keep us from receiving. I bind that in Jesus' name, Lord. And Lord, I loose, Lord, the Holy Spirit to speak deep to our spirits. As deep calls unto deep, Lord, as the water spouts begin to spout up, Lord. Lord, Holy Ghost, I call the people's spirit man to attention, Lord. That we would hear you, Lord. Oh, that we would hear you, Lord. Oh, God, that you would hear us, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to line up with the Father's will. Keep with the rhythm of the Spirit. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come to love this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what my heart longs for, to be overcome by your Lord, come on, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, come on, this is a prayer, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, come flood this place and fill the Fear. Your glory, God, is what my heart longs for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, oh God, your presence, Lord, your presence, your presence, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Let me become aware. Let me become more aware of your presence. Let me experience the glory of your goodness. Let me become more aware of your presence. Let me experience the glory of your goodness. Let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness holy spirit you are welcome here flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what my heart longs for to be overcome by your presence Lord Jesus Jesus your presence Lord your presence Lord your presence Lord Your presence, Lord, we need your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Jesus, let me become more aware of your presence.
presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what my heart longs for to be oh come on y'all we gotta pray this lord overcome us lord oh jesus jesus your presence lord your presence lord your presence lord jesus 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 let me become more aware of your presence such a day we gotta pray this experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence jesus let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become of your presence oh god let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your presence let me become more aware of your presence let me experience the glory of your goodness let me become more aware of your presence so oh lord let me experience the glory of your goodness oh god oh god oh god oh god I call out to you, Jesus. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, have mercy, oh God. Have mercy, my Lord, oh God, I cry. Mercy, oh God. Mercy, oh Lord. Mercy, 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 have mercy, Jesus. Oh, God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Jesus. 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 
This is a song Seymour wrote. Thank you, Lord. And we've been hearing it over and over and over again. Thank you, Lord. No, it's I am the Lord who's coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am the Lord who's coming. Have you heard my sound? I've been sending heaven down. I am the Lord who's coming to receive my throne. Worship me and me alone. I am the Lord who's coming. Have you bowed your knee? Earth is mine and all there is. I am the Lord who's coming. Let your tongue so speak. I am God, there'll be no sin. Wake up, wake up. Have you bowed your knee? I am coming as your king. I am the Lord who's coming. Let your lips so speak. Let all earth and heaven sing. I am the Lord who's coming. Have you heard my sound? I've been sending heaven down. I am the Lord who's coming to receive my throne. Worship me and me alone. I'm the Lord who's coming. Have you bowed your knee? Earth is mine and all there is. I am the Lord who's coming. Let your tongue so speak. I am God, there'll be no sin. Wake up. I'm the Lord who's coming. Have you bowed your knee? I am coming as your king. I'm the Lord who's coming. Let your lips so speak. Let all earth and heaven sing. I'm the Lord who's coming. Have you bowed your knee? I am coming as your king. I'm the Lord who's coming. Let your lips so speak. All the earth and heaven sing. Wake up. Give him your 
heart Give him your heart He's coming Saints He's coming The host of heaven Precedes him his sound breaks the mountains. He's coming, church. He's coming. He's coming. His reward is in his hands. What have you done with your salvation, church? What have you done with your salvation, church? He's coming. His reward is in his hands. His reward is in his hands. His reward is in his hands. What have you done with his blood? What have you done with his cross? What have you done, O oh church? What have you done? He's summing up. He's summing up all things. He's summing up your life. He's summing up your life. What have you done, church? What have you done, church? With the life He's given you. With the life He's granted you, what have you done? Jesus, let us be found worthy, Lord. Oh God, worthy, Lord, of your life. Oh God, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Have mercy, Lord God. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, Jesus. Lord, let us escape. Make a way of escape. Have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Lord, you're so holy. You're so holy more than we know, Lord. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. Forgive us for not knowing you, Lord. Forgive us, Father, for not knowing your ways, Lord. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us for, Lord, not understanding that you were holy, Lord. And we didn't understand the depths of what that meant, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, now the winds of your presence. Oh, Jesus, will understand. 
And I saw the Lord Jesus seated on his throne. Jesus, you were clothed in glory. Exalt did high, Jesus, and the train of your robe fill the temple, Jesus. The angels circled around him, Jesus, and they cried. have seen Jesus the Holy King and you cleanse my lips Jesus right before I die and the pillars shoot As the angels cry, you are holy, oh so holy, oh you are holy, Lord of all, holy, holy Jesus. going to continue to sing this song but Debbie can you look in that box right there and there's post-its and a pen and maybe some pens in the back I want all of you to write your family's names and put them in that box we're going to cover yeah yeah they can and we're going to sing as we worship thank you Lord thank you Lord I know y'all didn't see the words up there, but you know, it's like, I can't do everything. Thank you, Lord. We'll stay with Holy Lord, God. Thank you, Lord. I woke up two nights ago and the Lord said, get a box. And I want you to put all of Messiah's name. And then the Lord said, add the extended family and put him in a box. And we'll tell you when we get the message Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Saints, we're going to need our families spared, and I'll tell you. 
Hallelujah, Lord. We got to stand in the gap. I can't stand in the gap for everybody's family. There's got to be one man on the post in your family. You got to stand in the back. You got to stand in the gap for your family. Amen. And Malachi says, and it said, those who feared my name. The Lord spoke to one, the Lord, the Lord spoke to one another. And the Lord gave attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who esteemed his name. Saints like never before. We've got to get the fear of the Lord in us. We've got to get the fear of the Lord. And that's something I cannot put in you. Honey, I'm shaking in my boots. The word of the Lord that the Lord has spoken to Seymour and I have got us shaking in our boots. And like Seymour said, if he doesn't deliver the word of the Lord, he might as well go start digging the grave. It's serious, saints. We've got to really get real now. And it says, and they will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possession. The Lord is preparing his possession right now. And he said, I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. We got to serve the Lord. We got to stop playing church. Got to get real. Saints, it's already getting real. Thank you, Lord. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. I admonish you. Put your family, your extended family in this box. And when we come here every Sunday, I want you to lay your hands on that box and I want you to begin to pray for your family. So God will hide them in the book of his remembrance. We want our families to be remembered saints. We want to cover them in the blood of Jesus. We want to be the intercessor for our family. We want to be the righteous one like Noah stood for his family. And Noah was able to save his family because they, he was the righteous one that stood in the gap. We've got to stand in the gap for our family, saints, and cry mercy. Because what have we done with the great salvation that Jesus has given us? What have we done? That's the message of the hour, saints. Because everything's being tallied up. It's Luke 19 that Jesus said that his reward came and how much was the mina was given back to him. Oh, so holy you are, holy Lord of all. He's holy. Let's get in that repentance deep. And woe is me. For I am unclean. For my eyes have seen. The Holy King. And you cleanse my lips. Right before I tied And the pillars shook As the angels cried You are holy
anoint holiness to be over your families. Yes, Lord. You are holy, oh, so holy, oh, you are holy, Lord of all, Lord Jesus, for woe is me. For my eyes have seen the Holy King, Lord, and you cleanse my lips, have mercy, God, right before I die, oh God, have mercy, Lord, and the pillars show. As the angels cry, you are holy, oh, so holy, oh, you are holy, Lord of all. Just put your family name in that box. And we're going to put Malachi in that box. Lord, hide us. Have mercy on our families, Lord. Lord, let us be like Noah, Lord, in covering our families, Lord. Lord, we want to come into the ark of safety, oh God. Oh God, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Father. For maybe not being on fire the way you wanted us to be, Lord. Forgive us, Father, for being caught up in self and life. And, Father, that, Lord, you said that day would come upon us like a trap, oh God. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Father. Lord, every name in that box, Lord. Father, I just pray you would cover them, Lord. Cover them in your blood. Cover them in your mercy, Lord. We can only take care of those that you've given us, Lord. Lord, we can't take care of beyond that, Lord. But, Lord, we can cry for mercy. Hallelujah, Lord. Mercy, Lord, mercy. We cry mercy, Lord, mercy. Jesus. Mercy, Lord, we cry mercy. Mercy, Jesus. Mercy, Jesus. Jesus. Mercy, mercy. Mercy, Jesus. Lord, you see every name in that box, Father. Every family represented, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. And Lord, some of those at Messiah that was not able to come today, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, see their name. All that you've given us, Lord, to pastor. Lord God. All those that you've given us to steward, Lord. 
I pray your mercy over, Lord. Lord, that we would be this, this good shepherds, Lord, that hold our flock, Lord, every sheep, Lord, every one that you've given us, Lord. Lord, let us be faithful over, Lord. When you tally up our works, Lord, let it be said of us, Lord, that we were faithful, Lord. We were faithful with nothing, Lord. We were faithful to do everything that you put at our feet, Lord. We were faithful, Lord. And we did not complain, Lord, nor get bitter, Lord. But we stood, Lord, having done all to stand, Father. We've stood, Lord. Oh, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. That's my prayer, Father, for Messiah's church, Lord. All that you've given us, Lord. All that have come up under, Lord, what we have, you've given us, Lord. I pray for divine protection, Lord. I pray for divine healing, Lord. I pray for divine strength, oh God. I pray for divine anointing, Lord. I pray for glory, Lord. All those that will yield, Father. To the hand of the shepherd, Lord. I pray an anointing on them, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Father, today I pray that the ears will be open, Lord. The eyes of their heart and the ears of their understanding, Father, will be pricked and to be open, Lord. Father, that the eyes, Father, can see, Lord. Lord, help Messiahs to wake up, Lord. Lord, and I'm just praying for Messiahs, Lord, because that's our responsibility, Lord. Lord, only those that you've given us, Lord, are the ones we're responsible for, Lord. Oh, God. Lord, God, I pray for that responsibility, Lord, that we do it well, Lord. That we do it well, with filled with love, filled with grace, filled with mercy, filled with peace, Lord. Jesus. Bless them, Lord. In blessing, bless them, Lord. And the blessing will be, Lord, the book of remembrance to spare us as a father spares a son, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. Good morning, saints. I want to share with you that this uh, Friday, our church was enjoining Tim Sheets and all of the local churches that are praying for the gifts of healing and the gifts of miracles to return to the house of God. And of course, I want to share with you that Messiah's is ahead of the curve. Uh, we've had the gift of miracles happening over cities for quite some time. But the Lord God enforced something to me just a couple of weeks ago. And he said, in essence, it's time to seek me for the gift of miracles, to believe me for the gift of miracles. Now, I was raised around one of the history book, old prophetic voices out of the healing revivals of the 20s, 30s, 40s, who had the gift of miracles. 76 wheelchairs got up at one time when God dropped down into that room of about 8,000 people. I have seen the miracles of the Lord as an attached servant to this servant of God called to move in the gift of miracles 
But it's not till just a little while ago that God the Father, we've seen the gift of healing happen time and time again. And I'll just have to tell you, we've seen, and I cannot actually decipher rightly how to ever say this, but if we had to prove that eight people had been raised from the dead, we probably could do some kind of designation on that, though most of them want to stay hidden in that while. But it's actually the cup always overflows. Whenever we're in the hospital, we always watch if God's going to take us to anywhere else. Because when the gift of healing is beginning to flow sovereignly, hear that word, God the Father has the cup overflow. And we have all, Debbie and Michael, have been with us. And Debbie and Michael have learned, Michael and Debbie have learned that the cup overflows. And when we were praying with their father to be raised back from the dead, when his toes were curling down and he was going down into death, God the Father spoke to me three days. So everybody's praying on the second day, get up in the name of Jesus Christ, you know. And then, Seymour, you're not praying. No, the Lord said three days. No sense praying today. I'll pray tomorrow. And on the third day, he came out of death. Now, Debbie had already researched a guy that had been thrown through a windshield and was in a coma and was going down and had no responsiveness. And his father is sitting at the foot of the bed. And Debbie said, this is where the cup's going to overflow. So we didn't even have to do our homework. Debbie had already done it, and we went down, prayed for him, boom, out of the coma. We have been moving with the Lord in the gift of miracles sovereignly, but now God the Father has upped the ante and has said, believe me for the gift of miracles. So I went to Mike, and I said, God the Father says it's time for the miracles, and Mike just got his miracle. He's been battling the C word. And he went to the doctors, and the report is, sorry, C's not in control anymore. In Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. Now, Jerry is with us in the sanctuary, and he's probably got quite a testimony to tell us, but I just want to tell my little part. I'm seeking my father for my brother. And actually, I'm trusting God the Father to cause that to be a sonship in the Spirit. You have not many fathers. But I intend on being a father to all my daughters and all my sons in Jesus' holy name, in the Spirit. But that's something that can only happen by Lord Holy Spirit, not me. However, I have a daughter out of in Hawaii, and I want her to fly in here in Jesus' holy name. Jerina and I want to serve her and get her past the heart that is getting hit. So in Jesus' name... I sought the Lord for Jerry, and God the Father spoke. Now, when God the Father speaks, this is what you hold on to. Nothing else will do. Hold on to what God the Father speaks to you in Jesus' name, and he's speaking to Jesus in you. So how much of Jesus is in you to hear by faith what God the Father will speak? And God the Father says, I'll heal him. Meanwhile, Jerry's headed back to the hospital after God says, I'll heal him. What's going on, Lord? He got there. They had left gauze in his foot. After they got that out, the body responded correctly. Now, there are battles afoot, and we're not going to get out of the warfare. So you've got to ascertain that you have to learn to wrestle rightly. How many of y'all are willing to learn how to wrestle? Well, the first thing you need to do is just have somebody slap you upside of the head and then say, oh, that didn't hurt. Hit me again. Because in wrestling, you're going to have some power moves come and you're going to suffer a little pain. You're not going to wrestle with zero pain. But you're going to win all the time, every time in Jesus. Why? Because the battle is the Lord's. Ha! The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Now, I wish I could just stop and teach you about the gift of miracles, which I have studied ever since I was attached as a little servant to a higher servant than me at the time. I've studied the gift of miracles. I can say some of the time when God's going to move, and I can tell you some of the time when he's not. What? 
We were with Betty and her sister, my sister, and I'm sleeping in their house at Lake something, and she asked me, what is the Lord teaching you? We'd already seen multiple, multiple levels of people raised from the dead. That is what every ministry out there is seeking. And we've already seen it at Messiah's, and God is faithful. Does that mean that Jerina and I can raise the dead? We can't raise anything. God moves sovereignly. He speaks to me. I hear him. I trust him. I go. He shows up and does. That's how you raise the dead. It's by resurrection power. It is not by gifting. It is not by anointing. It's by being a trusted servant who hears the Lord God Almighty speak. That is how you raise the dead. Now, Carolyn doesn't mind me using her name, and it's too late now. Anyway, Carolyn, love you. She says, Seymour, what is the Lord teaching you? And he said, He's teaching me when he will not raise the dead. What? Yes, he's teaching me when he will not raise the dead. Can you understand this is the God you serve? He has a plan and a purpose, and he has his ways. And if you come up under the shadow of his wings and hang with him, you'll see the miraculous. Because he'll do it. He's faithful. But you cannot tell God how to be God. Sorry, that does not work. You have got to get your will on the altar and surrender and then walk with God and live the word of Jesus so that Jesus gets formed in you. So then, I have to be trustworthy. This is a brother-sister moment. So if you are led of the Lord, would you get up, go hug someone, tell them welcome to Messiah's, Live the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise and worship is dismissed. The orchestra can go down. Amen. Bless the Lord. Would you turn in your Bibles to Revelation, the second chapter? And the 18th verse. I want to share with you this morning, we are going to be dedicating Judah and Asher to the Lord God Almighty Amen. this morning. Such a day. And I weighed before the Lord, Lord, that's such an important moment. Shall we do it first and then minister the word? And God the Father said, minister the word first. Because this is the environment in the spirit that they will be raised in. I hope your ears heard what I just said. So then at the end of the message, 
We're going to have a marvelous time of dedicating two babies that are miracles in and of themselves. The birthing process, holding on to the Lord till they got here, was all miraculous. And twice now, we have had to hold on to Debbie in the spirit as she gave birth. Oh, my. Thank goodness we're exiting all of that in the normal living we trust in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, this is the message to Thyatira. Now, we are on the seven hearing levels of the one voice of God the Father, where the voice of love heals rejection, where the voice of authority heals rebellion, where the voice of Righteousness heals mixture, where the voice of truth heals the lie, where the voice of counsel heals deceit, which is a higher lie than just a simple, straightforward lie. Now, how many of y'all would love to be deceived by all the teaching that is happening in the body? If some of it is not God, how many of you would love to sit up under it? Any hands? Now, if it is God, how many of you would love to sit up under it? Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Mighty God. So this morning, the Lord spoke to me in essence. My job is to deliver the word that he gave, so I'm going to do that. The essence of Thyatira, remember that when Jesus presents himself to the church, he is presenting himself to who they are called to be. Behold, when we see him as he is, then we are changed. And your glimpse of Jesus this morning is your path to becoming like what you see. So in Jesus' name, everyone grow and never cease to grow. In Jesus' name, until the Lord splits that sky. Amen. So then... Verse 20, and we'll back up to 18 and 19 and grab them in a moment. I want you to hear verse 20 because it's the heavy verse. But I have this against you. This is Thyatira. That you tolerate the woman Jezebel. Now, pay attention who Jezebel is at this moment. She calls herself a prophetess. She teaches. She leads my bond servants astray so that they commit acts of immorality. Let's stop for a moment. How many of y'all recognize God is judging immorality in the house right now? He's not allowing it to tread ground anymore. He's calling it out, shouting it from the housetop. There will not be immoral acts in my house in the leadership. Now, how many of you think that's going to come down to the saints? If it starts with the leadership, it's coming on down into the body. So now, let's just have fun for a moment. All the men stand with me just for a moment. Now, from the moment you got saved... And ladies, y'all are not going to get exempt. Sorry, it's coming to you. Get ready. Us men got to go first. From the moment you got saved, if you never lusted not once since you got saved, sit down. Okay. In Jesus' name. Now all the wives are mad at their husband. <laughs> all right, men, take a seat. By mercy. Now all the ladies stand up. Now, since you got saved, Debbie's standing up. She just got the baby to take care of. Since you got saved and gave your heart to the Lord and salvation is real, if you've never lusted, sit down. Thank you all. Take a seat. So this is not talking. The scripture here is not talking about stumbling in sin. Scripture says it's not a sin to be tempted. It's only when we put acts to it. So keep this in mind as we go forward in this verse. And teach my bond servants. 
Now, a bond servant is the closest realm of servant, the highest order of servant in Scripture. The Doreen and I are bond servants. I do not lust. Why? Because I rule it. Does it come towards me? Of course. But I don't let it have my heart. I don't let it have my mind. I don't let it have my emotions. I don't let it have my anything because I've trained my spirit to be more dominant than my soul. Now, saying that, do you think I'm going to get a battle? You say anything, you're going to get the battle of that thing to make certain you got it because hell's going to say, did you hear what he just said, God? So let's see if it's true. And God the Father's going to say, have you considered my servant Seymour? Ah. See, there is a place in Thyatira where Jesus this morning is going to be revealed as he is on that throne. Most of us have Jesus by sloppy agape. Most of us have him on the cross still. Most of us have the red realm of heaven, salvation only, filled with the Spirit once in a while, following Lord Holy Spirit, I'm considering it. Can you hear what I'm saying to you? Now listen to this verse, because this is the most serious phrase in all of the churches thus far, it just got very serious with Thyatira. And you're going to see Jesus as he is. And leads my bond servants astray so that they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. So there is a place where this tolerance of Jezebel was not to be skipped in the sanctifying process. So before we go into it any deeper, I want to go back to who this church was called to be in verse 18, your first verse. The angel of the church in Thyatira write, the Son of God, the very first phrase, this church was to know the sonship level of God the Father. Jereen and I are in the mountains this January, and God the Father breathed out the eight principal ways that were given to Israel, and God the Father spoke, these are the ancient foundations. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. God has promised that the ancient foundations will be raised back up in the end day, and the first foundation is sonship daughtership to God the Father. So how many of you know Jesus in you has taken you into a relationship with God the Father? There's so much of the church that only knows Jesus, does not know the Father at all. Oh my, what a miss. So then, the Son of God, sonship, it's what they were called. Thyatira was called to no sonship. Who has eyes like a flame of fire. Now. Who has eyes like a spark of fire. I don't think so. Flame. The flame ignites anything it looks at. And for the most part, we in the church think there's some non-combustible things that won't ever burn. Guess what? They're going to burn if the eyes of the Lord look to it. How many of y'all have had some stuff hit you you never thought would hit you? When the eyes of the Lord look to a something with the flame of fire in those eyes, it's going to see if it is a fire dweller. How many of y'all have purposed to be fire dwellers? Because the eyes of the Lord are going to look. And when the eyes of fire look, Jesus looking at you with eyes of fire, you want to have been trained by Lord Holy Spirit to be a fire dweller. So then, 
His feet are like burnished bronze. Now, what does that mean? It means that Jesus was showing Thyatira, you are to dwell in the fire so much that the character nature of the fire goes into you and you become one with the burnt altar fire. That's what bronze does when it gets burnished. The character nature of the fire goes into the bronze and it never looks bronze. It looks burnished bronze from that moment on. Can you hear the word of God coming this morning in Jesus' holy name? I so tell then, you, just a second, we have had nothing but battle concerning this word. It must be very important. Praise God. Even putting this, this whole thing together, I have nothing but battle, and I know it's, it's really important. I like battle. So, amen. But we bind all of this. I enjoy beating up on the devil. Name. I can't pick a fight with him. He's got to pick a fight with me first. Once he does, now it's on. Amen. If you can understand that. If you pick a fight with the devil, that's your pride. You're going to get beat up. You're not going to win. But if he picks one with you, let Jesus in you show up. Amen. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. I know your deeds And your love and faith and service and perseverance and that your deeds of late are greater than at first. Now, I got to tell you, I hope God would say that about me. How about you? Amen. This is not a slack church. So let's just put some one-liners that are by the Spirit, so hear God in every single one of these. This church had deeds. What does that mean in the Spirit? It means they walked out the Word's direction. They walked in the Word, where the Word took them, and there was a place where Spirit was going to take over natural, sovereignly, and they led by the Spirit, stepped in, and God did deeds with them. This is not a slack church. They had love. What does that mean? It means they understood the transformation of the heart. Everywhere you have not forgiven, you have not been transformed. Everywhere you are bitter, you have not been transformed. Everywhere you are self-centered, oh, how many of y'all are ever the Christian that go, oh. You've not been transformed. But love does what? The first level of God's voice heals rejection, heals insecurity. Do you know what insecurity is? It's you believing in your own rejection, rejecting yourself. And love of God the Father heals that. And there's a whole movement out in the body just teaching, believe that God the Father loves you. I want to get past that first level. I want to receive, but keep on going. So then, they had faith. What does that mean? It means they understood how to trust at an intimate level. If God decides to slay you, can you trust him? Jerry's in a hospital. His foot looks like they're going to amputate it. He knows that is real. And what do I as his pastor tell him? Trust God. Can you trust God when it looks like you're going to get slain? This church had faith, so they trusted at an intimate level. How many of y'all are intimate with Lord, Holy Spirit, sir? Great Lord, Holy Spirit, sir. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. This church had service. Oh, my goodness. What does that mean? It means they had a link to the throne. They were up under authority. Lord Holy Spirit was leading them by speaking to them, and they heard and obeyed. 
We had service to the throne. Oh, goodness, this church is awesome. And they had perseverance. What does that mean? They understood warfare. How many of y'all have hit warfare and had to persevere? Yeah. This church understood warfare. And their deeds were growing. They weren't, you know, they, they, their deeds were growing. They had more deeds at the last than they did at the first. It means that maturity was keeping up with where God wanted to take them, and they understood multiplicity of the real. Now, we've got a teaching out there called multiplicity, the multiplyings of God. Guess what? God only wants to multiply Jesus. He does not want to multiply your plans and your purposes. He wants to plan kingdom and you step in. Can you hear the word of the Lord this morning? Because God told me to deliver it just like I'm doing. I said to Lord Holy Spirit, Lord Holy Spirit, it's not just the note. It's not what you've revealed in Jesus, but it's the way. It's the tone. It's the delivery. I can't do this. I don't know what to do. Lord Holy Spirit, you got to take over. You know what he said? I am with you, son. That is true ministry. Nothing else. Mental knowledge does not do it. Impartation by Lord Holy Spirit is the only thing that changes an atmosphere. So in Jesus' name, this church. But I have this against you. You tolerate. Now, you're going to see something in the scriptures that's pretty magnanimous. God in control. God the Father tolerated Jezebel too. Oh my, that's a revelation. Yep. God the Father said, I gave her time to repent and she doesn't want to. So God the Father was tolerating Jezebel. But then he has bond servants who've got to know the moment he will no longer tolerate. Every bond servant, raise your hand. Amen. Know the moment when God the Father will not tolerate Jezebel. Do not any longer tolerate her when God the Father is not tolerating her. And the scriptures will tell you what to do. So then, here is this approach coming to the house of God. And it comes in teacher form. Oh, and Jezebel can also be a male, so we always put oh, that on yeah. the women. I, I know more men, male Jezebels than I do female. Yeah, men and women can be Jezebel, yeah, because it's a spirit. Just so you know it. It's a spirit. But the scripture is defining this as a feminine, the weaker side. And certainly in the spirit, Jezebel is weaker than the true. Yeah. So then, at one time, Jezebel got saved. How about that one? Wow. I mean, how many of y'all think, if you can put your thinking caps on, Israel is going to receive a Muslim Antichrist? Not going to happen. Got to step into the temple. Got to have a DNA back to King David. Can you fathom, can you fathom this? A Muslim antichrist is not going to step into the temple rebuilt. He, he might come from a Muslim background, but he's got to prove he's got Jewish blood. So then, here is a teacher. Jezebel, once a Christian. Sorry, once saved, always saved, guys. And she comes as a teacher. How many teachers you think are out there? Y'all think I'm teaching this morning? I am. Revelatory teaching out of Scripture. 
And she comes as a teacher. So she is saying, I know more than Thyatira. And Thyatira does something. Instead of checking on the credentials in the spirit, which you are supposed to do. If you got deceived, do you know why you got deceived? Because you didn't do what scripture says you're supposed to do. Check on the credentials. How many people think that there are apostles out there with titles of apostles who have not raised the dead? Sorry, it's one of the qualifications. Oh my. So then, she also comes self pronouncing herself. How many self pronounced ministries do you sit up under? I am a prophet of God. Oh yeah? Who said so? I did. Oh yeah, self pronounced ministry. How many of y'all are sitting up under self-pronounced ministry? These signs shall follow those that believe. How many of y'all want to follow someone that doesn't believe? Listen to the word of God this morning because it's serious. Oh, Lord God, is it serious. So then, she taught. What did she teach? The future. Prophetic goes to the future. I'm teaching you the future. This is coming to the house of God. What you're hearing right now is coming to the house of God. She taught the future from a perspective that did not have God's ways. How many of you think Jezebel can teach God the Father's ways? Sorry, can't happen. So then, she was received. She got received. As someone beyond the foundation already laid. True set apostles laid a foundation next to Jesus. Jezebel comes along and says, I'm building on that. No, she wasn't. She wasn't building on the foundation. And she wasn't building with true spiritual stones. She wasn't building with the ways of God, the Father, in Jesus, by Lord, Holy Spirit, sir. So she has this leadership of bond servantship to bond servants that is false. And the bond servants did not do their homework. They didn't go by discerning of spirits. They didn't go by scriptural qualifications. Listen, don't judge someone as not saved and not longing to be used by God. Give everyone that level but don't give them your submission. For heaven's sakes, don't send them finances. Now you're blessing the mess and creating the muddle that we've all got to come full circle to in the house of the Lord. God the Father has a plan and Jesus is the initiator and the fulfiller, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. We're happy with Jesus as the beginning. Save me, my Savior. But we don't want to know him as King Eternal on the throne. How many of y'all have Jesus as King? Hear the word of the Lord. You must have Jesus as King, Savior, Lord, King. Now, when a king gives a command, how many of y'all like to say to the king, uh, is there anybody else up there? I don't like that command. <laughs> what? Get my flesh burnt up on the altar? You got to be kidding me. I'm in the comfort. I serve Jesus for the comfort ride all the way to heaven. What? I got to tell you, heaven's going to disappoint a whole lot of people if you make it. I'm not saying you won't make it. I'm not your judge. I'm just saying I'm going to do everything I can to make it in. Now, if you can hang on to my 
coattails, I'm climbing up Mount Zion. That's where we're going. I want to see the view from the top. I say it all the time. See you at the top. People don't know what I'm saying. See you at the top. Where's the top? At the height of Mount Zion where Moses met Yahweh at a burning bush. In the spirit, that's still real. So then, she teaches the future from a perspective that did not have God the Father's ways. She had a leadership role to bond servants. And these bond servants, instead of paying the price to belong to God the Father only and ministering to the audience of one all the time, I'm ministering to my Father this morning, His Word given. Can you hear that I am not going to move the line for me or anybody else? We got to come God's way. So in Jesus' name, the bond servants opted for the audience, the atmospheric audience of a prophetic teacher that was teaching what is untrue unloyal to God, a turncoat in the spirit, a betrayer, oh my, a manipulative Caesar seizing what is God's best for themselves. Can you hear this? Verse 21, I gave her time to repent. And she does not want to repent of her immorality. Now there's the mercy of God. That's the mercy of Jesus. Wanting her to repent. She is born again at some point, And she can repent of what she is doing. And the Lord will keep her as his. But she has something that she does. She goes over into immoralness. Now, we always think sexual and sensual and flesh level of man. But this is immoral in the spirit. In other words, you and I have a covenant relationship with God the Father. And when we take our side of the covenant and we go give it to something, to a demon to the demonic presence from hell, and we covenant with that, intimately arranging ourselves to enjoy the blessings of flesh and lust and pride. We just committed an immoral spiritual act to God the Father. That is this verse. So how many of you will say today, Father, I'm just flesh, but I repent, of my lust of my flesh, I repent of my lust of my eyes, I repent of my pride of my life, I repent of my way, and I repent of my deed. Now, if you don't repent of your way and your deed that you did out of the lust of your flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, you don't really want to repent. Now, how many of us really don't want to repent but want to bust heaven wide open? Think about it. Do you want to repent always, carry the sword of repentance with you, stay clean before the Lord? That's an automatic Christianity 101, basic. No, I prayed the prayer one time. God's got it. Grace has got it. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll meet you at the top, and when we stand before the Lord God Almighty at the great white throne judgment, I hope you're right. I'm not passing judgment on you. I hope you make it. I hope the mercy of God and the grace of God is so great, but I happen to know that grace is the power to do, not the invitation to sweep it under the rug. Oh, my. So then... Verse 22. In a second. Verse 22. This is the one 
that for the church's sake in the earth, I wish there were a way around this scripture. There's never a way around any scripture. All scripture supports all scripture. This is the Jesus. Coming up in verse 23 out of 22. That the church is going to have to get to know. Behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness. You're going to see a lot of Jezebels get sick. Oh my. And those who commit adultery with her, that means you bond to her more than you bond to God. Ah. How many of you are more loyal to some, including Jerina and I now? This is your proof test. How many of you are more loyal to some teacher, some prophetic voice, some prophet's office, some apostolic office, some evangelistic office, some teacher's office, some pastor's office? You're more loyal to them than you are to Jesus. Who did your loyalty belong to? Jesus only. God the Father, only. Lord, Holy Spirit, only. Now, I wish I had time. I don't. Privately, I've told probably most everybody in this room about times where God the Father would break his rules without breaking them. Now, that's a wild place but God the Father does have an ability to break his rules without breaking it. You try it, you're going to get in trouble. You can't break it. you got to go by the rule. But God the Father is so big that he owned the rule before you ever knew it as a rule, and he's beyond the rule, so he can break his rules without breaking them, and that's up to him. He says, I'm giving Israel a written divorce. And then he says, nope, I'm marrying them. And I don't want to be the one that says to God, make up your mind, God. He's already made up his mind from the beginning. He already knew the end. He's going to marry. God the Father is going to marry Israel. Jesus is going to marry you. Ha! How that happens in the Spirit, figure it out. In Jesus' name. So then, here is... Jesus speaking that he's going to throw Jezebels on a bed of sickness. And what are they doing? They're occupying a prophetic office, self-called, self-pronounced. And they're teaching the body of Christ things that actually you'll find out in Scripture that belong to the deep things of Satan. I'm going to stop and let Jerina speak to you about the deep things of Satan. Amen. Um, I know I'm quiet today, but God has shown me so much. I'm just shaking, kind of shaking in my boots. Anyway, the Lord spoke to me, and I've said it to you. We are always teaching you how to grow in the spirit, but it's a way that you don't want to hear, and that's get rid of you. Get rid of all the discipleship of hell. Well, people are teaching. I've heard this. They're teaching a whole bunch of things, but one is to walk through walls. They're going to teach people how to walk through walls. And I've corrected that many times, and people would say, well, Jesus did it. But Jesus said, Satan had no way in me. There's a key right there. I'm going to, I'm going to say something here, and Jarena will take you to it. We're trying to teach people to walk through walls, and they're hooked on porn. That's the deep things of Satan. And what is that? That's coming up. Jesus said, friend, remember at the wedding supper? And Jesus said, friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? We're teaching people not to put on wedding clothes. These things. I wasn't saying the teachers, although that could be true too. Wait till you see the report. We're teaching people that are unholy, ungodly to 
get past, they haven't even forgiven their teacher and their mother and their father, and they were going to teach them that they can do like Jesus did and walk through walk. Jesus was a holy God. Jesus walked holy. And he says, be holy as we is holy. As he is in the earth, so are we. So whoever he was is who we're supposed to be in order to have certain levels of spiritual things that it takes holy hands to do it. So what the enemy is doing is the what the enemy is saying to the church is that you can have the holy things of God without holiness. You can walk into things, and the temple pattern is that when you went past the laver at the burnt altar, the laver, and the I think there was something else, and then you went into the holy place, it said that you handled holy things. These are holy things that they're trying to teach you without holiness, and we are a, a, a Harry Potter generation that want the power without God. We want the things that are holy to the Lord that God only allows holiness to, to handle these things. And we have people, so-called prophets. I'm telling you the things that are being played on YouTube, we need to stop listening to that stuff. If we don't hear the sound of the Lord, you better turn it off. This is a shot over the bow, saints. We've got to stop listening to all of the garbage that's being put out on YouTube. Because if you listen to it, you try to step into it, watch out. Sickness is coming to you. Because this is what scripture is saying. Saints, I want Seymour to end. I don't want, I want to, I'm going to let Seymour do. And then I'm going to show you a timeline that this is happening right now. Saints, it is so serious that I'm, I'm just shaking in my boots. I'm even my own, in my own self. I'm just saying, Jesus, forgive me. Honey, your king just came on the scene. Your king is here. It's happening right now, right before our very eyes, and we're trying to open up your eyes to see that things have switched. Remember I said to you, where we are going, we have never been before. Because we're used to our loving Savior loving us, having compassion on us, working with us. And it, will he do that? Absolutely. But now it's the summing up of all things. And the way that we saw Jesus, we better adjust our eyes because everything has changed. And some of this stuff, it cannot compute what we are about to see, saints. And I'm worried about Messiah. Hey, I'm responsible for y'all. I ain't responsible for nobody on that TV. I am concerned about you guys. You are my charge from the Lord. You are my charge. And I'm concerned about you. Anybody else, if they hear it, good. If they don't hear it, every man's got to, and my mother used to say this, every tub got to stand on its own bottom. But I'm telling you, Messiahs, hear with a whole heart what we are saying. Because once the sword of the Lord has drawn, and it has been drawn, it was like Moses said, when he led the children out of Israel, when they were going on a journey, he said, this angel will not forgive you. You follow and you do exactly what you're told to do. You can rebel if you want to. But things have changed in the spirit. We are in a different day and a different time. And if, if, you, if this word here, he gave her time to repent. Saints, repent. I've been teaching repentance. How long have I been, you been in Messiah's and you've heard me say repent? Repent, repent, repent. Do it as a, as a lifestyle. We got to do the book of remembrance. It said those that feared the Lord. Those that feared the fear of the Lord in you will say, Father, forgive me any way, anywhere, Lord. Help me line up to your will. We are now dealing with the king. We are not dealing with the, a lamb. We're not dealing with the shepherd. We're not dealing with Jesus if you have known him 2,000 years. The king is now on the scene. And a king, you don't get to say, well, you know, I just don't feel like doing that today. You don't do that with the king. We don't understand kingship. Once the king says something, you obey. Obedience, obedience. Seymour, has been, we've been ministering all these things forever but I want to let Seymour to finish and I want to show you a timeline that has happened in real time right now that the Lord has been showing us for four or five years 
And it, it is real, y'all. It is real what is happening in, this, in the spirit and in the natural. Amen. So behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. Now, beds are resting places for another day. Another day ahead, you rest so you can navigate the day coming. Sickness will cause you to plan accordingly. Sickness will interrupt you going day to day to day to day to day to day to day. All of a sudden, you'll take stock. Amen, Jerry? Absolutely. And I can say amen a whole bunch of all of us. So then, God is working in conviction power. Look at the true grace of God and mercy. God is working with conviction power to Jezebel to get her to repent. But she decides that she loves the immoral, covenanting with the demonic, and giving away what belongs to God the Father only. Loyalty to God. No, I'm going to be loyal to flesh. Sorry, that won't fly in heaven. Amen. So then, there is a place where I wish we could get past the next verse, but we cannot. You're about to see Jesus like you've never seen him. If you've got the fear of God, you're okay with this Jesus. If you don't have the fear of God, you might decide to backslide today. You might as well. If you don't know this Jesus that is in this scripture, just go ahead and backslide. Because you're going to do it anyway. What? You're counseling me to backslide? I'm counseling you to repent. But if you don't embrace this word today, you will be part of the great falling away. Mm -hmm. Now listen to the Jesus that's on the throne. And I will kill her children. Do you serve a Jesus that can kill if he decides to? How big is your Lord and Savior? That's the king talking. That's not the savior talking. That's not even the Lord talking. That's the king eternal talking. And I will kill her children. What is Jesus saying? Jezebel has followers that are her disciples and I will not let them live and propagate my name. I will take them out. Oh, my. And I will kill her children, how? With pestilence. Now, I want to tell you a great truth. Grab it. As I shared with you, Messiah is way ahead of the learning curve in the gift of miracles and the gift of healing. The power moves from heaven backing you up. The church out there beginning with Tim Sheets and all of the apostolic that was back up planned for that, is seeking this, and we're already there and been there for years. Do you know what narcissistic is? It's when you can't have a relationship right in front of you, but you can have a relationship way off in the distance that'll never know you. That is narcissistic. We have already gone into the ground that everybody wants to go into. Long time ago, in Jesus' name, by Lord, Holy Spirit, sir, if you would listen to me, I can get you past what you are facing. But because you're familiar with me, you won't submit to me and let me guide you in Lord, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. So guess what? Keep your mess till you're ready. What? Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm a servant to every person in this room and beyond this room to pastors across the board. When they listen to me, heaven does this most marvelous thing. It kicks in for them. 
and delivers them and guides them. Isn't that wild and wonderful? That's what heaven's supposed to do. But we get so familiar, we can't face the reality of what is right in front of us. So I'm trying to tell you something now. Here is Jesus, and he's saying, I am going to kill with pestilence the children of Jezebel. How many of y'all know this Jesus? I know him. This is your Savior talking as king. He is going to kill the children of Jezebel who are her disciples. You're going to see the saints of God die. How are they going to die? With pestilence that they cannot get past because they don't have faith of the ages rolling through every cell in their body. Now listen to what I'm telling you now. I told you, got to deliver this word today. Out in the body is a surmisings and a summary and a heart after the Lord to have the gifts of healing and the gift of miracles return. That is God. That is not, not God. That is God. However, for you, you've got to understand that there's going to be two things happening at one time. Number one, God the Father's going to return miracles to the house because he's stirring it now in my heart. Gift of miracles. Gift of miracles does not have time frame like the gift of healing does. And at the same time, there are going to be people that are not going to get healed by the gift of miracles. They're going to die from stuff that's coming because they don't have faith of the ages in their heart. Pestilence is coming and there's not going to be time to research a cure. You're going to have to face it by faith. COVID cannot live on me. I preached in this pulpit, walked through COVID people, lost 40 people to COVID. Some of them died. I walked right through the atmosphere of this church and preached while facing death. I knew COVID could not live on me. You must have that faith. COVID nor anything else that's coming cannot live on you. In Jesus' name. Start seeking God for that level of faith. Because Jezebel's children that have been discipled by wrong prophetic teaching are going to die of pestilence. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're not going to convince Jesus not to do it. He's already decided to kill her children. In the word, it's sealed, set, done. It's coming. So then, now every prophet, I think of me and Gordon, Jarena, throw Linda in the mix. We're liable to throw Heather in the mix, even though she's got the mercy gift. But the prophets have a mercy gift, Leticia, amen, that's greater than the mercy gift itself. And if there were a way that we could rescue Jezebel's children from dying of pestilence, we would. But we can't because heaven has prophesied what it is going to do. Now, there are tons of people saying you won't be here. You won't experience any of this. Well, how'd this church get thrown into tribulation if you don't have any tribulation to go through? Oh, my. What? Pay attention to the word of God. And interpret it rightly. So then. I am he. Here's your Jesus. Here's my Lord. Here's my King. I am he who searches. This morning, Lord Holy Spirit is searching two things inside of every person in this room and on that camera. That camera wants to turn away from but cannot. And somebody rebellious just clicked off. I don't care. You're going to backslide anyway, be part of the great falling away. What do I care? I care about those who can hear. He that has an ear, let him hear. If you heard yesterday, hear today. There will be peoples who say, I can't hear that. Well, good. Reap and sow. 
sow and reap. It's the best teacher. It's the inescapable teacher. You reap what you sow. So learn from reaping. But there's a lot of stuff I don't want to sow because I don't want to reap it. How about you? So then, I am he who searches the minds and hearts. Now I want you to catch a glimpse of this. Jesus intends for the church. Are you the church? I'm the church. Are you the church? Jesus intends for the church to know him as he who searches the mind forever for thoughts not like him or for him. Thoughts that are for him are not for him. And he's going to search the mind. How many of y'all have had thoughts that are not for him? How many of y'all have had thoughts that are for him? Amen. He's going to search the mind. And he's going to search the heart. So then, how many of you want to harbor and meditate on and enjoy and act out with deeds what is not spirit kosher ground for eternity? No, you only want to act on what has eternity in it, the life of the Lord in it. Now listen, I don't know how many of y'all are going to make it next Sunday and sit in that seat, but you made it this Sunday and God parked you there for a reason. Don't blow it. Don't lose the understanding of why you are here today. I didn't know you were coming. I don't ever know who's going to show up. <laughs> Messiah has gone from 1 o'clock where we came on time to 11 o'clock where almost nobody comes on time. <laughs> We're having to make the transition. Oh, my. So then, verse 24 has a wonderful transition. I wanted to put something up that's sobering. There is a study out there across the boards in the Christian world. And it says that more than half of Christians use porn and they're comfortable about it. That's enough. But understand Jesus is the one who searches the mind and searches the heart for what is his belonging to him and for what is not his and does not want to belong to him. Can you hear this? So then, I want you to imagine if that study is true, half of all the friends you know Touch base with porn. What? Yeah. If that study is true, then half the Christians in the body of Christ in America go to porn. I trust that it's not true, but at the same time, I know in my spirit that we live with a comfort zone Christianity. We do not live with a surrendered lordship Christianity. We do not live with a kingship eternal over our lives owning us Christianity. We live in the red realm, but we don't live beyond it. We live, I prayed the prayer. 20 years ago, I prayed the prayer. I hadn't repented of a thing since, but I prayed the prayer. So then... But I say to you, verse 24, the rest who are in Thyatira, now, think for a moment. There are some peoples in Thyatira that had deeds, 
they walked out the word's direction. They had love. They understood the transformation of the heart. They had faith. They trusted at an intimate level. They had service. They had a link to the throne. They had perseverance. They understood warfare. And their deeds were growing. They understood multiplicity of the real. And they had one other thing. They did not follow Jezebel. Get them, God. Get them, Lord. <laughs> Get them, Lord. So then, listen now what I'm going to tell you. The rest who are in Thyatira who do not hold this teaching. I can spot Jezebel's teaching. It's so easy. They just, oh, no, I believe this. No, 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 this, this, this. Who do not hold this teaching. When you see someone bent on a certain level of teaching, watch out that Jezebel in the realm of the spirit is not behind it. Oh, my. That sobered a whole bunch of people just then. This is a sobering message. So then, who have not known the deep things of Satan. How many of y'all would like to be bonded to some of the deep things of Satan? Covenant with the deep things of Satan. What has Satan always done? rebelled against the ways of God for the ways of flesh. I cannot tell you how much soul power out there is calling it spirit power. It is not. The word of God divides soul and spirit. Soul is not spirit and it never will be in Jesus' holy name. So then, I love, thank Jesus for being Jesus, I placed no other burden on you. I want to tell you what that means. It means that if I live Jesus in front of you and I'm in relationship with you and we do deeds, I don't have to be your judge. Your own life is going to judge you based upon what you sow and what you reap. I don't have to come to you and say, you're listening to a Jezebel, quit it. Sorry, you can watch my life that is not listening to a Jezebel and come into agreement that we are not going to listen to a Jezebel. That is what God is saying in his word. I place no other burden on you. We do not have to be the sanctifier of what is not going to sanctify itself. Now, we do have to bear one another's burdens, but I got a rule for you. You got to bear your own load. Yes, I don't pick up your load. You do. But if you've got a burden, I'll help you bear it. Yes. Bear one another's burdens, but each man shall bear his own load. Yes. Now, most people think, well, I heard this kind of preaching in the 50s. As a child, and it was Pentecostal fire all the time. Listen, I am just telling you, this is the truth of this word. We cannot desalt the power of this word. We must abide up under the authority of this word. Now, if you've got the fear of the Lord, guess what? You're enjoying this word. You see Betty smiling. She's got the fear of the Lord in her. She knows this is truth that will save a generation. This will redeem the house of God. This will rescue everyone who's listening to falseness. This is awesome. This is wonderful. This is God rescuing us from going off beat and not inheriting. 
So then, he who overcomes. He who overcomes. How many of y'all are overcomers? I don't care what parks itself in front of me. I didn't order it. Jesus, my Lord and Savior, cannot be defeated. I go with him and I overcome anything that comes. Why? Not because I can, but because he can and he's with me. Hey, he who overcomes. And he who keeps my deeds until the end. Now those... In Thyatira, that did not go with Jezebel, had deeds of God. Deeds of God. But they had to keep on in those deeds until the Lord said, Okay, no more deed time in the earth. There will come a time when deeds will cease. Oh my. And you want to be about the deeds of God till that moment in the spirit. But guess what? To him... I will give authority over the nations. That's revival. You are in training to go to nations and move in power and demolish the spiritual atmosphere of the demonic over a nation, releasing revival into the earth. That's how it happens. You got to take the demonic off the mountain and then glory comes down. So, how many of y'all survive in this message this morning? Yes. How many of y'all appreciate God yes. speaking this word to us? Yes. Listen, for whatever reason, I didn't know this word was coming. I just knew when I sought the Lord for how counsel of God heals deceit. And I said, Lord, where am I going to find that in Scripture? I know that's you speaking, but where am I going to find that in Scripture? And God the Father said, the seven churches. And now, going through the seven churches, all I know is lying before the Lord, getting up in the middle of the night as God wakes me up. I've got something to show you. Get up, sit down before him. Lord, Holy Spirit takes over. Unraveling the ways of God beneath the Scripture that are always there. This is the word of the Lord to this moment in history. I don't know how God's going to take it to the whole church, but somehow it's got to get out there. How many of y'all send Sunday's messages to everybody knowing that they're going to hate you for it? Can you hear what I'm telling you? This message goes forward by you. Send it to everybody you know. So then... He shall rule them, I'm sorry, when you hold to the Lord in deeds. This is God the Father showing up and ruling and reigning over the demonic. And that teaches you, that's your training ground for how to rule with Jesus over the nations. If you don't conquer your own demonic, you're never going to rule over a nation. you got to conquer the demonic that comes for you, and then you will know how to have authority over the nations. Mm -hmm. So then, and he shall rule them. Boy, I hear Lord Holy Spirit. I hear God the Father dropping something, so I've got to say it. When we were in St. Petersburg, Russia... The principality over the whole nation of Russia showed up in our room, spoke in an audible voice to Jarena. I want you to hear what he said. He just called me the son of a beast. Now here is this demonic entity over Russia speaking to Jarena that she is the son of the beast. He's talking about the beast in Revelation that comes up with the Antichrist and the false prophet, that she's the daughter of the beast. But that principality is the son of the beast. There is a blindness in the realm of the demonic 
that trust their leader, Satan. However, there was nothing in all of Russia. I don't know if you know, but most Russians are alcoholics. Go online and look at their wrecks in Russia. They're all drunk behind the wheel, and they get upset with somebody that pulls in front of them, and they don't put on the brake. They hit the gas so they can make the wreck more punishable. That's Russia. And the women are so lewd, it's unbelievable. There's no moral compass on the nation. There's churches that are really born again. You'll find morality. But the nation as a whole has lewdness in the women. And guess what? The principality over Russia had nothing in us that he could hit. Nothing. So we took authority in the spirit and saw signs and wonders over St. Petersburg because of it. So then, listen to me. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces. Now we're almost done, so listen closely. If I am a pot maker, how many of y'all realize we've got a potter and we're the clay? Jesus is the potter, we are the clay. If I'm a pot maker, Jesus is a pot maker. Once you make the pot, you fire the thing in the kiln. When it comes out, if it has an imperfection that will not hold, if it has a crack running down the side, water's going to come out. Jesus did not take the pot and say, Oh, you pretty little pot, you pretty little pot, I'm going to plant herbs in you. You'll be okay, I'll let the rain come down. When the rain doesn't reach your roots, I will water you anyway. No, he smashes the pot with a rod of iron. Because the potter doesn't want wrong pots with his name on it out in the community, then nobody's going to come and buy his good pots. Jesus does not want his wrong name on you because then you're not going to salt the earth and have others come to him as Lord and Savior. Can you hear this word? I'm sensing the power of the Lord dropping. This is a sobering moment. Don't run from it. So then, as I also have received authority from my Father, Jesus broke that pot because God the Father is not letting a note gone wild back in. The Philadelphia Orchestra used to record in our church building. They came in, flew in from England, and they would be about the business of recording, and when they would crank up, every musician warmed up their instrument so that they would literally play their favorite piece. And every single person of an entire couple of hundred orchestras, musicians, were playing their piece and it was like an enchanted forest. Nobody was playing the same thing. They weren't playing anything together. It was just like an enchanted forest. They were just warming up their cello, warming up their violin, warming up their fiddle bass. Can you hear? The devil was a note gone wild. He's not coming back in. I don't know if you can hear it. A note gone wild is not coming back in. Eternity, brand new, a new heaven and a new earth is not going to kick off 
with a million billion notes gone wild. Put sin on the altar. Get saved from your sin tendencies. This is beyond salvation. Walk with your Lord as Lord and do not let anything lie. Carry the sword of repentance with you every day. So then, and I will give him the morning star. Did you know you are the replacement for Satan? He is the morning star. It's what he was called to be, the morning star. Jesus is the bright and morning star, Amen. outshining that morning star. Thank you, Lord. And you are called to replace his function. A worshiper, yes. I will give him the morning star. <laughs> now listen, you're just first level. The morning star is the first star out in the morning. Who knows what eternity is going to be like, but there's stuff coming after you. You're just the morning star. You're not the last star. You're just the morning star. So then, listen to what Lord Holy Spirit says. Jesus speaking through his spirit, Lord Holy Spirit, sir. He who has an ear. Do you have an ear this morning? Are you hearing or are you playing comfort, God, with your emotions? He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to Thyatira. No. To the churches, every local church in the earth. So now, a simple understanding. We think... Because we have thought in replacement theology for a long time without even knowing we were doing it, that we replaced Israel. We have never replaced Israel. And on October the 7th, a judgment came to Israel. Now, I'm going to have a lot of Jewish hearts that are going to be upset with me. I'm a Jewish heart, so I don't care because that's a Jewish thing. I take a stance for what is right, and I don't care if you take a stance for what is wrong. I'm going to take a stance for what is right. That's a Jewish thing. And on October the 7th, a golden hourglass turned in the spirit. Jerina saw it. Israel was attacked, but they were worshiping foreign gods out in the desert. And judgment kicked in from God. Judgment begins at the house of God that is Israel, not the Ecclesia. It is a scripture given to Israel, not the Ecclesia. So where's our judgment? You just heard it. Lord, Holy Spirit speaking through the seven churches. That's your judgment. That's my judgment. That's our judgment. Yeah. This judgment belongs to the house of that you know, the addendum house. Amen. How many of y'all are going to say, I'm going to walk with the Lord? Amen. How many of y'all are going to say, I'm going to repent all the way? <laughs> How many of y'all are going to say, if anything comes up and Lord Holy Spirit shows me it's not kosher, I'll just repent? Amen. There you go. You got it. That's the key. Amen. So I want to show you a timeline I've been speaking Y'all have heard this timeline throughout the period, okay? So it started with me in prayer, and I said to the Lord, talking about my problems, you guys heard me say that, and I said, Father, forgive me what's on your heart, and the Lord speaks to me the summing up of all things. I think that probably was in maybe 2020, 2018, sometime like that. So then the next thing that happens, you know, the Lord shows us different things, and then when I saw Israel get attacked, I saw, like, to me, it looked like a biblical scene. You see, you know, women dancing like a snake, and you see this idol, and in the background, you see 
the people, the flyers coming in and bombs falling. I thought, oh, my God, that looks like something out of the Bible. And then I realized, and the Lord speaks to me when I told Seymour, I said that word where it says judgment starts in the house of the Lord, the Jews, there were no Gentiles. The house of the Lord was, he was spoke that word to Israel. Judgment first starts in the house of the Lord. The Lord was saying, judgment now has begun. It started in the house of the Lord, and now the judgment is coming. Well, this dream, I had a dream, remember, of people sitting at a table of two women together. They were immoral, and one, there was breast cancer. Y'all remember the dream? Do y'all rem- y'all remember the dream, right? She had breast cancer. It was, I knew it was there. It was over the heart. And all of a sudden, she grabs her breast, and it's like, ah, I'm in so much pain. You know, and uh, she locks the window. She locks out the word of God and all these people in the church. Y'all remember that dream. The Lord was warning, this is Thyatira, the immorality in the church because the people were in the church. The people were involved in the church. They didn't mind the immorality in the church. Again, the Lord warning, warning, um, judgment is now here. I'm judging not only the church, but the world as well. And then I told you the story. If you haven't heard this, all it's all on YouTube. We've done it teaching. Uh, go three teachings back because this is why it's I'm shaken on the inside because of the things that the Lord has shown. Um, the Lord kept reminding me of a boiling pot of an angel that had his feet were together and there was a red fire and all of a sudden the fire turned to blue. But the angel of the Lord had a sword in his hand. It was a short sword. Thank God it was a, a short sword. And it had it uh, the sword up and the sword went out over the United States. And then I saw a boiling pot and the Lord, a giant hand came and scooped the the garbage off of the top with the scum off the top. And the giant looked in the pot and there were just a few little lights, but the Lord was pleased with the light that he saw that was lit up. And then the Lord, now when I read back what I saw, the Lord said the boiling pot was going to be actually the thing that would save America. And this was all about saving America. And then Seymour had had a word. Oh, in the, in the back to the dream of the woman the, that was lewd, the Lord said, I have been speaking to you. But you have not been listening. I heard the audible voice of the Lord. And that's back to the people in the church and the woman. I have woman. spoken to you, but you did not hear. Right. A little different. Right. Now you are going to hear my sound. And I heard that word audibly to the point that it woke me up out of the dream. And I had to immediately write down the dream. So the Lord again was saying, now you're going to hear my sound. The Lord speaks the same thing kind of to Seymour in that fact that I have, what did the Lord say? He has a dream. He has, doesn't have a dream, but he's troubled. It's three or four nights later. He has a troubling moment before the Lord, and the Lord speaks to Seymour. I have spoke to you what I'm going to no, the Lord, Seymour asked the Lord, Lord, what will you move on? And he's troubled all night. God shows him all these scriptures as he's sleeping. So in a troubled sleep, he wakes up and the Lord speaks to him. I have told you what I am going to do, but you have not heard. So again, that inability to hear. What is this saying? He who has an ear. Saints, pray for an ear. Pray for an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches like never before. Pray that before the Lord. Pray that the eyes of your understanding will be open. Pray for ears. If you'll pray, God will give you ears. So then when Seymour says that, the Lord, we're at home group, and the Lord says to me, he says, I've already told you the fires that is coming. And so it was the boiling pot that the Lord had shown me in my book. I wrote it at the end of the book. And in my book, it said there will be three fires. The first fire will be a cleansing fire. We're in that fire right now. 
He said the third fire will be an empowering fire. That's what we're talking about in Thyatira, where the, where the revival will come from those that, that will do what's right. What Thyatira is separating the holy from the profane. That's why the Lord said, I'm coming with eyes of fire and a two edges. I'm going to separate what is of me and what is not of me. Saints, it's happening right now. And so then the, the, second, the second fire that was going to empower, the Lord would empower. And the third fire, the Lord said, would come that would gather. Now we ministered that word and the Lord came on me in such fire that it was like I wasn't going to say it because it seemed like it was too strong, too over the top. And I was hearing the Lord while Seymour was ministering, but all of a sudden the words began to burn in my belly. Literally, I felt like a burning just began to burn. And I said to you guys, the Lord told me to say, he did not care what you thought. He did not care what your opinion. He didn't care what you believed. He didn't care about any of that. What we were saying was going to happen was going to happen. That was Sunday. Wednesday, the Lord speaks to us, speaks to me, and he says, go get the new phone. And I thought, well, okay. Wednesday, we're in the office with the AT&T people. Suddenly, the electricity goes out and alarm goes off. The people were afraid in the store, and, I, and they said, ooh, this has never happened before. And so it happens three times, and I told Seymour, this is prophetic. So on that Wednesday, I think that was Monday or Tuesday. In the mouth of two or more witnesses. You have to pay attention. Yeah. And so I'm saying on Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, I'm saying, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't get these phones. Maybe God was speaking to us with the electricity going off and the alarms going off. And maybe, you know, something was, was there to that. And then I thought, no. I said, whatever phone you have, it's all going to be the same. I don't believe that was it. I believe the Lord was speaking of us something that was going to take place where the electricity would go off and there would not be any power. And so Seymour and I were, you know, talking between one another that Thursday night, we, uh, Seymour says, make sure you charge all your phones. Well, we had prayer that Thursday night, and I had prayed, and when I was tired, when I got done praying, I just left my phone, and my phone was not charged. It was dead, and, um, and, but I had charged everything else in the house. That Friday, we woke up. That storm, Helena, I believe it was Helena, hit. We slept through it. I think... Uh, Letitia and Betty and then were telling us how horrible it was. We went to sleep. We didn't even, it was almost like that was really prophetic. And we woke up, all the neighbors had stuff all over and looked out at our yard, nothing. We had nothing. Matter of fact, to us, it was like no storm. And we slept through the whole thing. And we didn't even know that the electricity had came off and came on. I mean, we just did not know nothing had happened. Yet we were talking I about preparing that for night it. night sleep. We slept deep. We slept it deep. It was wonderful. A wonderful sleep. Well, here's the scary part for us, for me. You know, I warned, and what happened, and what I saw that happened to those mountain people, what happened to the thing, that was the judgment of God. Okay, so we're Wednesday home group this past Wednesday. We're talking about we want to help the people in North Carolina. You know, Seymour and I just love people. We just want to help. You know, what can we do to help? And Seymour said, we need to have somebody else, you know, some people in the mountains. And Panim, El Panim is coming up. And so uh, Paul and Marion call us. These are longtime old friends, and they pastor in the mountains. They pastor in the mountains. And she's telling me, she said, Hunt, I said, well, how did y'all fare up there? How was it, you know? They, they was really, you know, she said, honey, have you looked up Craigtown? Well, we didn't know anything about Craigtown, where there were so many Craigs that they called the place Craigtown. And it was on top of, like Craigslist, top of the mountain. She said, we lost 30 or 40 trees, and she said, a tree came down right in the middle of my house. She said, we were in the house when the tree fell. She said, you could see the whirlwind. She said, they looked outside, and the whirlwind was was everywhere. She said our church is completely destroyed, you know, that she was just telling us the destruction. But she told us, she said, and I said, and then I began to, I felt bad because I felt compelled to tell her about the boiling pot. And about, I'm like, afterwards, like, Lord, these people, this is horrible. 
But then she began to tell me she lost 13 people in her family. She said the mountains, the tops of the mountains, we're not hearing this, literally fell on the people's homes. And they did not expect it. And whole families was buried up under the mountain. And 25 they are homes. where they lie. Where buried where they lie. They're too deep underground to dig them up. And she said, she said, Jarena, I saw the most horrible thing. She said, we saw cars with whole families buried in the mud that was trying to get out. She said, but I have to tell you, she says it was the judgment of God. She said that on top of that mountain, she named all the mountains. She said, Chimney Rock, Black Mountain, Asheville, where they were. She said they had witches on top of the mountains and they were doing wickedness in the sight of the Lord. She said they were having uh, alien stuff going on. They were calling forth wickedness and the Lord, you know, the scripture says that he will make a mountain, a plain. He made the mountain, a plain. We don't have to revelationize that y'all. Those are us plain words that happen plain right before our sight. We say something on Sunday, that Friday, it is taking place. Saints, it's scary. Now, what happened with Marion is she told me this. She said, 13 people in my family are dead. Her own family. Her own family. She told me, she said, we are still burying them. She says, some of them we cannot. And only reason why we found them was we followed clothes all the way down to a car where they were in the mud, buried. She said, these are good Christian people that loved the Lord. They were servants of God. And they're no more. The righteous came down with the wicked. Saints, we're in a serious day. We're in a serious day. This scripture that Seymour is saying, we ha I told you. We're in a different place than we have been before. We have never been this way before because we are used to our Jesus being so loving. So, oh, the mercy. But, honey, he's been waiting for 2000 years for us to get our act together. It's been 2000 years. What 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 have we done with his blood? I read this morning, the Lord spoke to me. Do you remember that scripture? How we used to talk about it all the time. Now, some of us may say, well, I haven't lived 2,000 years. Yeah, but you're living in the last 70. There we go. The Lord spoke to uh, how we used to say this, and he said, saints, y'all don't understand. There's a Jesus that's going to come forward that scares me to death. And it was, um, let me see, Luke 19. Now, Luke 19, remember the Lord spoke to me and said, the summing up of all things in Christ Jesus, I believe it's Luke 19, it is 27, I believe. And it's, it's Jesus is talking about the parables of the Minas. And he said, you know, a noble distant woman, a noble man went away in a distant country. And is talking about the minas that, you know, what did you do with what you were given? And down in 27, you read it, 19, and it's the parable starts in the parable of money usage. Uh, so it's parable uh, Luke 19, 11, and 27. And this is the Jesus that needs to scare you. Because it's talking about the summing up of all things, that the Lord is looking, what did you do with your great, great salvation? Did you waste your time? Did, did you, did you, what did you do with what the Lord gave you? And it says, the people that, that did not want Jesus to rule over them, they weren't going to do what he said. They were going to come in a different way. They were going to do whatever they wanted to do. This is what Jesus says himself. This is in red letters. But these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them in my presence. That's what Jesus said. And how we used to say that all the time. He said, y'all don't understand. Stuff is switched in the spirit, y'all. 
Once Israel was judged, I saw an hourglass with the sands of time begin to fall. Something else just took place that is, I'm telling you, y'all. Y'all remember I had a, a vision, and in the vision, the Lord shows me the vision seven times. The first one, I see a meteor. It's a meteor, and it's, it's coming past, past me, and I feel, I see bombs going off, and I turn and ask, where is the bombs falling off? Where, where are the bombs? And the bombs were, um, the bombs were in, uh, he says it's Turkey. The bombs were in Turkey. And then I see the earth dying. I could feel the earth dying. This alignment thing is taking place and the whole universe is paying attention to what is happening. The first scripture, there was scripture reference coming with each segment of the vision. The first scripture that came is what is being spoken right here. I will give to each one according to his deeds. The first scripture that came was, was uh, whatsoever anyone did that was bond, they received their reward, whether bond or free. Last week, Turkey was bombed. Saints, and I heard the Lord say, it has begun. So more than any other time, make sure your election is sure. Make sure your heart is rooted and grounded in Jesus. Let's make sure, saints. I, I mean, Seymour and I are not prophets of doom. If we didn't have to bring this word, but God has been, I mean, it has been upping and upping itself and upping itself that the Lord is saying, we are in a different place. A king now has showed up on the scene. The Lord is lining everybody up. After I woke up in the morning and I said, Lord, I want everybody's name in our church in the box. I want them in the box, Lord. I want to cover them in prayer. While you are moving, Lord, let us be in the book of remembrance. Spare us like a father would spare a son. Lord, spare us. Prayer, humbling ourselves. Saints, to me, this is very scary because we are sharing things. And, oh, my God, disaster is coming before we get. It's like hot off the press and disaster is coming. And like Seymour said, if people turn away, I'm not responsible for them. I'm responsible for you. That's all I'm responsible for. I'm not concerned about nobody that don't want to hear. Amen. Because I believe others are hearing. God is speaking to others his own voice. But saints, we are seeing the, serious of the, the seriousness of the moment, the seriousness of the hour. We've got to stop playing church and being self-centered. It's got to be about Jesus and not about us. It's got to be about him. Amen. When I was a little one, I gave my heart to Jesus at age five. I remember the salvation at age five was real. And it lasted about a month and a half. Then I remember going to church. And there was a song, and I was drawn to it, and I would dread it all at the same time. While on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. See, just singing that one-liner, I've got tears in my eyes from how much work Lord Holy Spirit did on me as a child. I can't sing that without remembering the multiple times conviction power would come over me, the little sinner. Saints, don't pass this word up today. Live it. So now I have a couple of announcements in Jesus' name. One, got to get out my trustworthy pastoral pocket knife.
We brought you guys a present. And home group started in on it. But this is four different types of chocolates with a praline and a turtle. Amen. So, woo, Indy, will you help me and pass this around, beginning with yourself, and you can nibble the whole way? And whatever's left over, we're going to take to Mike and Kathy, and Kathy doesn't want it because she's on a diet. 